Now let's make the barrel. What we want to do is have the the barrel kind of jump up a little bit, not just go backwards, but like as if it's, you know, so blasting so hard that it's coming off of the the base there. So, we're going to do this almost the same thing except instead of punch position, we're going to use punch rotation. And then in there, let me just copy and paste the the settings in there. Um, oh, sorry. We need punch rotation and then barrel. Then inside the curly braces, we'll say because the first one's saying what it is, and then the second variable are all the 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 parameters. So we've got the x the x rotation, which is I just put as negative ten, and then the amount of time I wanted it to come back more quickly than the than the bounce backwards does, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Let's see how that does. So that looks pretty good. That's already making it look way more realistic than it was. If you'll notice, the wheels don't move. So looks a little funky. All right, so the next thing we'll do is rotate the wheels. Like I said earlier, we put the wheels in an array so that if we wanted three sets or four sets or five sets of wheels, it would all be the same. So let's start with a for loop. No, wheel. Okay. So for each wheel or each set of wheels, we are going to run another iTween thing. We're going to use punch rotation just like we did before. And we're going to say wheels i. And that'll, like, the first time this runs, it'll be 0, and then the next time it runs, 1. So we're, we're running the, the first and then the second item in the wheels array, OK? And let's do the curly braces. And inside there, we're going to do the kickback distance times 250, because the kickback distance was 0.7. So this is just based on the wheel size. And you should probably make that its own variable that you can adjust based on the different wheels. but didn't that's all right and then kickback time again because we want it to be to match the the other kickback stuff so watch it now now the wheels are rotating in a way that looks more realistic and you could do cool math to base it on the the radius of the wheels and whatever but yeah I didn't want to go through that so I just kind of eyeballed it okay so the next thing that we want to do is get that camera shaking so let's say if camera to shake. So if if the camera if the, if the something's defined in there at all, we'll do this. And if there's not, that's no big deal. It'll it'll just ignore this. So the very first thing we want to do is find out how far away the camera actually is from the cannon. And Unity has a really simple way of doing that. So we're going to do ver distance equals vector three dot distance and then all you have to do is add in the one item then the next item and then it'll spit out a distance the exact distance no matter what direction it is for you so the camera to shake position and the cannons position easy all right now that we have the distance we want to say as long as we're closer than the the shake radius we want it to actually shake if it's farther away we don't want to worry about it so the next thing we want to do is determine how much we want it to shake so so that if it's right if your your camera's right next to the cannon it's going to shake a lot more than it would if we were you know 9.9 .9 meters away so we are going to say we're going to call that shake volume and we're going to say that equals camera shake amount which is what we had defined earlier in the variables divided by distance okay easy now we want to make it actually shake and we're just going to use punch position again which is so handy punch position 
and we're gonna it's camera to shake that's that's the thing that we want to shake and what do we want to shake we want it to shake uh, we want to shake up and down so across the y-axis and we want it to be a shake volume that we just defined right here and time and this was something we defined earlier too camera shake time okay so that should do it that should make it so if we're close to the uh, the cannon let's see we're set there so the only thing we have left to do is uh, the muzzle flash now I'll show you the code here. I'm not going to go through it just because it doesn't use iTween and um, it uses probably a, um, a method that you're is easier to figure out something that you might be more fam familiar with. It just shoots it up to the to the light intensity amount that you want and then over time it drops it off pretty quickly. So that's it. If you want to have this project with the model with everything with it all built with a muzzle flash you can go to activeden.net you can go down to the unity 3d category and just search canon and here it is